through the eyes of a child. Very early on in my life, by the age of about seven, I knew there were things that happened to me that I would never knowingly have happened to any child I might bear. I knew then that I would have a child. Many barren years, with monthly agony later, nearly giving up on the possibility I would bear a child to this world, I discovered that I had a fibroid tumor and I had three options. I could have a hysterectomy, and I knew at the word that that wasn't going to happen. Or, they could prowl around with the surgical weapons and extract the mass. With a good probability, it would just grow back. He gads. Or, there was a third new option, wherein they go in and cut the blood supply to the mass, with minute particles that block only the tiny capillaries feeding the mass. They would direct an instrument designed to navigate the blood works of a human. In the six years they had been doing this, the success rate was holding at 98-ish percent. Oh, and by the way, the fertility of the women went up. Well, my choice was clear. Number three had my vote. And so, I was put into a state of consciousness where I observed but was not impacted, while they went into my femoral artery and snuffed that thing of blood. Lo, within a year, the blessed one I had waited 46 years for was in my arms and at my breast, fathered by a man I admired and loved in many ways, and whose foibles were his downfall when my sister kept our daughter and broke up, as my daughter chose to name it, the Awesome Family. But that is really a story for another time. I do grasp why it happened, but my sister will not believe me, and so I will move on from here. One of the things, at that age, I vowed I would not stand for was her being touched sexually until she thought it was appropriate on her own. Well, at that early age, it did not matter the gender. No clue had I if it would be a boy or a girl. Because that is what I endured. And as a mother, I would watch for that like a hawk. And here, today in this comic book creation of Crown Bug Invasions, created climate hysteria, color of skin insanity, paid protests, all with the new normal brand given to us on their media platter while we're in this mentally weakened state. They interject the idea that adults who want sex with children should be okay. When I was first pointed to a piece on the web at a reasonably high-traffic site that suggested that pedophilia was normal and just fine, I was sent, in my mind, to the days when, though not considered okay, nonetheless such things happened. And once there, my fury built. How dare anyone not consider the child's perspective? I can picture many a scenario wherein the child would just be fervently wishing to escape, as I did when it happened to me. I endured it, doing as I was told, and if he asked me a question, I gave him the answer he was looking for. And here they are, with their mental surgery tools, trying to implant the idea that this practice should be accepted, laws repealed embraced by human society. As one who has vowed to protect her child from this, I am officially outraged. And any who are not at the top of their outrage, I have no respect for. Hereby and through my outrage, I say, never will I teach that this is acceptable. Never will I proclaim its huh, virtues. It breaks all three of the laws of ethics. It often can hurt the flesh and is always without fully informed consent. Children cannot be considered to be fully informed. It takes the child's time, energy, and mental stability away. And it is a defraud of the child.
Any ethical sovereign should be standing now and stating this is not where we will drive humanity. We will stand against all unethical behavior, and that surely includes the sexual and mental molestation of children. Thus I make my stand. For more on taking membership in the Society of Ethical Sovereigns, see the link in the description. Written, voiced, and produced by Amaterasu Solar, Shill for Humanity. Love, always. Humanity will win.